Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of Show Me Your Build. Now, I know there's a lot of text here. I added a bit more. Um, I wanted, and actually that's something I should have asked, but it was a bit already too late, there was already submissions in, so I decided to say fuck it on that regard. Uh, the thing I added is just add a screenshot where you have the unit without buff and one with well you have them up. The reason why is because then I know more or less what buff you're using on your team. That's all I have to say, everything else is basically the same. So, let's get started. I have a bit more build than last time to cover because, well, there was more build to show this time around. Uh, I believe I counted the amount of submission to 60, or roughly around that number, which is more than I expected to get, so enjoy the longer video, I guess? As usual, if you do want to participate, just join the Discord. Um, I'll be waiting until the 3rd or 4th to open the Show Me Your Build section. At which point you can just go in. So, I suppose we should get started, eh? First off, let's go with this Ophelia from Color Craze. I believe it is. Yeah, color craze. This is an attack plus death minus Ophelia. Well. So. I have one, or actually two things to say here. This is not a bad set per se, but you can definitely improve on it. Um, one of the best things you can actually give her is, well. AOEs. I've said this in my video about Ophelia, well, the video about the banner she was from, actually. Uh, AOEs are her best kit, or her best special, sorry. Blazing Wind especially. There's a reason why someone was able to just solo Tiki's G LHB with just Ophelia and Dancers. That set is disgusting, and you already have Special Spiral for it. And attack plus, and it's plus 10. Might as well, right? Um, there's one thing you might want to know, however, before you do this, and it's quite simple life and death is better than death blow 8, and then death blow 4, sorry. The reason why life and death is better is because it does not consider, uh, you know, stats that are only added during combat. Death blow is a initiate on target during combat you get 8 attack. So the, this 8 attack is completely out of the equation. Life and death is the highest buff you can have to your attack and besides it doesn't matter you one shot them! AoEs are just stupid. The only character on the entire map Tiki was in that Ophelia could not one shot was Tiki herself because she was on a death tile. She was still dead on turn 1 because what happened is Ophelia just AoE'd on the guy next to her, got danced, and one shot at Tiki on the death tile afterward. It's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. That's why AoEs is honestly our best special. It's only getting to the point where you're able to use the AoE. If you can just use a mage that has infantry pulse, or another mage, or a single unit with infantry pulse and you run quick and pulse, there you go. That's all you need. It's really all you need. Death Blow 4 can be good and Luna can also be good, though I find that I find that choice actually a bit questionable. You have other attack wave, that's 65 attack. Death Blow 4, that's 73 attack. Uh, Draconic Aura, maybe? Um, that would be 21 damage, for sure. Which is better than... For any other encounter you'd be dealing that has 42 res or, you know, less. Which... I don't think you find 42 res all that often, especially on, you know, greens. They don't tend to have that kind of res. But yeah, like I said, AoEs is definitely the way to go. I would definitely go for that. It probably would help you a lot, actually. Other than that, this is a good 
a good build, and you definitely went for the right vein, uh, the, the right vein, the right boom. Sorry. Anyway, let's move on to Rand Max. Rand Max bots drog. Sorry. I kind of need also my Discord open to the left, so I can actually see what people said about their sets, because... Lo and behold, some actually had really long things to say. So... This is a typical draw, but I'd ra I, I figured I'd show it off, because not a lot of people realize this is kind of like one of his optimal sets. It's quite simple. Uh, you want to have a bold fighter so you can double Zelgius 100% of the time. You want a death refine instead of a speed refine because speed doesn't help you that much the higher you go in arena. You want armor smasher to be able to deal with Zelgius, to be able to deal with a lot of armored unit. Bold fighter will also be able to just destroy quite a bit of them. Uh, the only Zelgius that might be a problem actually would be instant, you know, Black Luna, but you have enough HP to actually be able to tank it. This is an attack plus HP minus drug, however. Um, so let me just get this quite quickly out of the way. This is not a good bane for him. Um, the main reason is, again, Black Luna. As it stands, you have 47 defense, 51 when, when initiating. If you're dealing with a Black Luna Zelgius, you are taking 40 defense loss, so... You're taking 8 damage a swing also, so... Well, you take 48 damage already there. So, as a result, you might want to go and get a bit more health. Uh, the only matchup Res Minus will hurt you from is... Uh, Grimma, and I guess now Tiki. But Tiki is not really a character you should be fighting to begin with with this guy. 64 attack, I believe, with. Well, no. Probably Fear stands going up, so. Let's say it's a plus 10 and it's attack plus, that's 61 attack. 61 attack becomes 73 attack, you take 51 damage. You take the hit. And if you take 3 less res, you take 54. But. Your HP would be at 59, so again, you'd, you'd basically not change anything. Res Minus would not hurt you in any way, shape, or form. The only matchup you would lose a bit more health is Grimma, essentially. So... Eh? You will most likely be one-shotting Grimma either way, so... It doesn't matter if you take more damage, Bolt Fighter is not that big of a threat. Now, it can be dangerous still, do keep that in mind, but... Like I said, it's basically just a change of IV, the rest is per is perfectly fine. Uh, Gale Force might be a bit of a better choice if you're scoring really high, because... If you're at the point you score so high, you see nothing but armored units. Um, there are times where you'll want to just initiate on a unit and then back off. But you can't do that with reposition. You can do that with swap, you can do that with drawback. So your best shot becomes just Gale Force, because you can attack, kill, get out of the way immediately. It's one of the safest thing you can do. I thought I'd point that out. Aether is not a bad option by any means, I've just figured I'd point that out. Anyway, moving on to the attack plus HP minus Gigero from Melidonis. Alright, so, this set, it's so close to be really cool, actually. This set hits 74 attack. That's ridiculous. Uh, 74 attack against dragons. There is also a note Melidonis left about it, let me just find it. There it is. Planning to get a death minus attack plus one someday. Okay, so I want to point this out, but don't do this. It would fuck you over. This is attack plus HP minus, and yes, it needs to be replaced, but attack plus death minus will do more harm than good. Uh, the reason why you already have a gap, your defense is already the lowest stat, 
And you're dealing already with armored units, which means, well... You get one shot by armored units, dragons will do more damage as well, it's not good. However, the bane I would suggest is res minus, because you're not using any ploys. Res minus is basically a dead stat, outside of dealing with mages. Which are not very consistently there. Now, the best IV for you would probably be attack plus res minus, hence that. Now, with that out of the way, he also says he has Vantage, Chain, uh, chain Challenge, wow, good job Jay, Close Counter, and I plan to to have both those skills on her. Additionally, I was debating giving her a kitty battle for harder maps like Defense Relay or Abyssal Mode where mages are crazy tanky. Okay, so if you're talking about PvE purpose, Res can be perfect, it can be nice, but considering this, you go from res minus from HP minus to res minus. You take only one hit as long as it stands. Your bulk is basically the same against against uh, mages. So yeah, you'd be fine as a result. Kitty paddle is definitely a decent choice. I have sky Maugi, Ma Maugi, cloud Mahuigi, dusk dusk U Uchiwa. Hooray for destroying pronunciation, Bar and Barb sure can all attack refined. For those who forgot those weapon already, it's the Dragon Effective, Armor Effective, and Cavalry Effective daggers. Barb sure can is a cooldown minus one dagger. So, okay. I also have Poison Dagger Plus on her, and I plan to find a way to make her more of, a, of an Omni Nuke. Okay, so... Since you're, you really seem to want to invest on her, I will say two things. One, Special Spiral. I know we just went over Ophelia, but it's still relevant here. If you have Special Spiral, you can chain AoEs. Now, you can't by default. However, if you change your seal to Heavy Blade, you get two charge from Special Spiral, and then you attack to, f to deal the, fi the, f the finishing blow. Get two charge back. There you go. You have four charge. AoE is ready again. You know what the best part about this is? This is stupid, but it's actually one of the rare time where the already bearing built in on those weapons are good, because you're at the point where you're using blazing. You're using AoEs, which in case you don't know, do damage before combat, which means if the foe has Vantage, he will proc Vantage and, and hit you, which can be very, very deadly for a unit like Kigero, who's not very tanky. However, because of Hardy Bearing, that's not a problem. It completely trivializes Vantage. So, if you can chain AoEs like this, you're actually hitting like a truck. And also, Heavy Blade is a great choice for her anyway to begin with. The reason why is quite simple. You have 74 attack to begin with. You lose 3 attack, who cares? You're at 71 still. With an effective weapon uh, at most of the time. That you'll be able to pick and choose depending on your ch on your on your problems. Or, what, or rather, depending on what you're fighting. Whatever, you get my, what I mean. So... If you run special spot, uh, special spire, spire, what? Special spot, J, special spiral. I can do this. I swear, I get. I, I swear, guys. I can. I can do good with English. English. Wow. If you run special spire, you'll be able to just keep procking AOEs, and as long as you have AOEs up, with what would be 63 uh, attack because it doesn't count death blow. Well, you'll do just fine. To some extent, you could say Fury would be a bit better, uh, because you would be able to take a hit if required. As a result, if you fight a unit, and say you attack with Heavy Blade, get two charge, get hit back, then hit again with getting two charge again, your AoE is ready to go, and then special, uh, special Spiral can just shit all over the enemy. It is stupid. Absolutely stupid. How much you can do with this. 
So yeah, it, it's it's an actual good set. The the only thing is basically change the B slot to special spiral and change the seal to heavy blade so you can really use those AoEs more consistently. Other than that I have nothing to say. This is a good set. Moving on we have the attack plus res minus soleil from eternal oh god it's a long ass name let me just find it so I don't butcher it. Eternal Tea Party Ghost Alright, attack plus res minus, she has slaying edge with a speed and death refine, as well as armor slayer, death plus refine. I'm guessing I'm guessing he or she meant uh, armor smasher, which is A-OK. -okay. Um, she has fury, darting blow, sturdy blow, vantage, renewal, chill death, attack tactic, and panic ploy. Okay, panic ploy is a bit tricky. Uh, if Soleil ever becomes a bonus unit for Arena, that would actually be really good because she would hit 59 HP. Otherwise, it's a bit too iffy. Attack Tactic, I can definitely see that work. I don't know what your entire team is, but I can see that work, definitely. Um, Vantage, Renewal, Chill Death. Okay, well, I would say... And you might call me basic for this, but Desperation is probably also a good choice here. Um, Sturdy Blow is actually really good. It's probably the most accessible 240 SP A slot. I'm guessing this is also mostly for Arena, in which case you can't really use Desperation. But for PvE content, Desperation is definitely a great, uh, a great option. Death plus refine on armor smasher is actually the, the optimal way to go. Um, the higher you go, the less important speed becomes. And even now with green dual infantry, it doesn't matter. Uh, you still, you, you're still a red unit. You're going to be one-shutting them. As for red flyer dual, well, I guess Ida could avoid doubles. Eh. And to some extent, Pala, but you don't see those all that often. But yeah, um, not really much to, ch to say here. Desperation would help you for PvE content. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you use Armor Smasher, just like what I said about Drog, Gale Force is also a great option to just go and kill, get out, essentially. As for the IVs, the IVs are fine. I don't see any problem with them either. So, moving on. This is uh, an attack plus speed minus Shershi, Shershi from Shock Conan. So, first off, I already see this, this the Brash Aspiration set. I will say, do not go speed minus. You want attack plus res minus with this set. Um. The reason why I say this is because it's actually quite simple, really. Your speed becomes relevant against certain matchups. For example, if you're fighting Murr, you're not quadding. And with a double, you're not killing. So, you kind of... And that's even the remaining the same with own flyer. So... Yikes? Um... So I would go attack plus res minus as a result. Our res is already so dead it doesn't matter, honestly. So as a result you'd end up with 21 speed. That's salvageable. Um, especially with sonar support and such, you can actually get to a, a decent amount of speed to a point where, you know, you can actually quad through Great Flame, because a lot of people, and I, I, I did not pay attention too much beforehand, but a lot of people run Speed Minus on Murr. Absolute idiots. I tell you. Because it's like, oh, look guys, we don't have any ways to double away. Quick Repost is a thing, Vengeful Fighter is a thing, Bolt Fighter is a thing. And they all transform this into a speed check. If you go Speed Minus, 
you're killing yourself in a lot of matchups. That 3 speed is very important versus certain armored units. Hell, there's a reason people go speed plus on her. Because it makes it makes Great Flame so much more consistent. Anyway. With that epiphany out of the way. <laughs> Brash Aspiration is a good idea on her. Um, she will struggle to get in Brash Desperation range. But, yeah. Uh, work Also, Chuck Conan says, Work in progress, attack plus speed minus, has cancel affinity, Aether, res tactic 3. Uh, is within a mixed team where she gets plus 6 attack and defense. Still struggling giving her odd attack wave. I would say a mixed team is better because you still need a 6 defense on top of the 6 attack. It's absolutely required. Um, otherwise the Brash Desperation set just falls off. Because with 21 speed, taking hits to get in Brash Desperation range becomes extremely dangerous to the point where you're either full or dead. So you kind of want to have as much defense as you can stack up on it. That's just how I feel. As much as Heavy Blade can be fun as well, I don't know why I feel about that one either. 60 attack is good, but I don't feel like it's good enough. The whole reason why Heavy Blade is kind of just... Eh, as a skill. There's plenty of armored units out there that just have the attack stat to just shrug it off. To give you an idea, Grima has 66 attack on Fire Season because he's with Legendary Actor. 66. Legendary Actor himself is at 64. Huh? What the fuck do you want me to do with this? There's a lot, a lot of Axe unit that actually hit 60 attack, so... Brash Desperation with Heavy Blade as a seal can be detrimental, to say the least. Also, Moon Boy is cool and all, but that would give you maybe 12 damage, and I'm being generous giving you, like, a, a foe with 40 defense. Ignis would probably serve you better, especially if you're in Brash Desperation range where you get... If you actually get Heavy Blade to work... Um, you get 60 attack and say, well, you proc Heavy Blade, well, you hit, hit, proc, hit. Instead of hit, proc, hit, proc. And at the same time, if you if it lives after the second hit, well, you have Ignis off charged. Then it's like hit, proc, hit, hit. Just, just giving you an idea. If it's already charged, you're procking, hitting, hitting, procking again. It's stupid. <laughs> I will say though, this set can definitely work in a flyer team. Because in a flyer team, you can actually run goats to really make up for it. And with speed plus, you will break a lot of wary fighter and such. Uh, no doubts about it. And also your attack would just hit skyrockets, to say the least. So yeah, essentially don't dump your speed. Um, and dump your res instead. Maybe change Moonbow to Ignis, or Glimmer. Um, Glimmer would probably do you better than Moonbow. Though Heavy Blade kind of uh, makes your attack kind of iffy a bit. Other than that, well, obviously the best A slot that she could run would be Deathblow 4, but that's kind of expensive, obviously, so... Eh. I think that about sums it up. Let's move on to... Homeless Joseph Ephraim. Homeless Joseph Ephraim. Oh, wow, that sounds horrible in my, in my mouth. So, this is the Ephraim you wanted to show off. Um... He also says, once I get an odd attack wave, he will be unstoppable, and he can double, what's oh, fucking hell, kill me, and he can double on both phase, he easily reaches 74 attack, do I give DB4? He has a plus attack minus speed, and he has gale force, double rally gale force again, okay. <laughs> Ignis, bonfire, luna, steady breath, triangle adept, fury 3, vantage, desperation, lens breaker, wrath, 
and own speed. Along with his auto refined weapon, he has a ton of stuff. So what do we, what to do with him? Oh boy. Well, you already have one of the two sets I had in mind. Um, Devlu four or Devlu three with desperation is definitely good with him. I will say um, Legendary Ephraim does do this set better because he has just more attack. That's just how it is. Uh, but Base Ephraim can definitely use it as well. Especially with Heavy Blade to just get Hafer to proc. Flame Sigmund is a bit better than his base weapon if you, do, if you don't mind the buff utility to go away. But... I don't know what to say here. Um, drag back would also be a good option to get. Because the best thing about drag back is you can go out of where your other units are, get the buff from Flame Sigmund so you double, hit Desperation so you double immediately, kill the unit, and then you, well, no, actually, not Desperation, but I guess Drag Back does require a healer, I suppose. But if you have a healer, you can just go in, smash, Drag Back out of danger, and then you can just heal back up or something like that. So Drag Back can be a good option, otherwise this is good. Um, you can also make this an enemy face set with Steady Breath. If you run Steady Breath, do not run Aether, um, obviously, well, actually... That's just a fact in general, um, but if you're not thinking about scoring, remove Aether, put... Um, well, okay, for this set, let's just start with that. Uh, run Bonfire instead. So on your first fight, you can attack, get hit, prog Bonfire and kill. If you feel like you are safe enough with the amount of attack you have, run Ignis instead. Um, the reason being that way you can attack twice with Desperation and then you can switch to a different target on the next turn and then just proc Ignis on their face immediately destroying them regardless of combat triangle. Which is really good and basically what I did with my Levitane. If you want to see what I am what I did with my Levitane on uh, my arena run, I, that's actually probably going to be a video that's going to go up a bit later this week. Uh, other than that, if you're running Steady Breath and making him an enemy phase unit, obviously Quick Repose is going to be useless here because of Flame Sigmund. But you can run Wrath since you said you actually gave it to him. If you run Wrath, well, Ignis is definitely a great option. Um, Heavy Blade is a bit... Uh, it can work if you need to go on the offense on player phase. Do, do keep that in mind. Comboed with Wrath, well, you can just essentially charge up to some extent, Ignis. Other than that, Aether can still be a good option if you use him as a tank because, you know, you have to take hits to give hits back. So Aether can actually give you an, a reliable way to get HP back. Uh, if you're using Steady Breath, I would say Close Defense is probably your best seal, obviously. Um, just basically lower the damage as low as you can, so you can really keep your bulk alive, essentially. Other than that, I don't have much else to say. Speed Minus does not really hurt him all that much, though if you're using Desperation Flame Sigmund, Speed Minus can and will hurt him in the long run. Especially if you decide to merge him, especially if he gets demoted and then you decide to merge him. Uh, please, speed minus has to go. Attack plus res minus will do you far better. Same reason as explained a lot earlier. I know I'm sounding like a broken record at this point, but... Mur will block you, or rather cock you at this point. Um, Legendary reactor will cock you. Warrior Fighter Effie will cock you. And so on and so forth. If you can have more speed, you reduce the number of units that can fuck you up by their, by their ability or Wary Fighter. It's just as simple as that. If you can't double with Ephraim, 
Ephraim loses a ton of damage. That's it. Anyway, let's move on to this HP plus speed minus Fey or Fa from Dark Quaker. Um, okay, so I do have a quote, well, a quote, a uh, thing he did say here. If I can fucking find it. Hello? Oh, no, I didn't actually note it. Oops. Give me a moment. Just need to find where he said, where he talked about his fa. Oh, there it is. HP plus speed minus currently. Plan to give qu quick repose three on slot B when I have enough feathers. Leaving last merge for if I decide I want different IVs. Arena scoring bill, of course. Okay, um. So, HP plus is really good for Panic Ploy. I can definitely see that working. However, I will give you one thing I want to s I definitely want to say here. Uh, you're using Light Breath and you're using Steady Breath. Those don't work together. Um, the reason why I say this is because Light Breath is honestly shit. <laughs> the more time passes, the less I like the, I, I like the skill because it's a great buff, but unless you use it on player phase, you get nothing out of it. Like, at all. It's so bad. Because if you get the buff on enemy phase, it disappears before you even get to use it on your player phase. Because it lasts for one turn. However, it turn th it's it, it works like this, okay? You have enemy phase 3. Uh, 3 being the, the turn number. And after enemy phase 3, it's player phase 4. It's counted as a different turn, so light breath is over. So you, you lose the buff immediately. You only get the buff as long as the enemy phase of your enemy team w works if you're using it as a enemy phase set. It's good if you're initiating, but then you don't have steady breath, and you don't have a lot of speed, and... Yeah, you lose a lot of potential. You have Steady Breath and QR here. Those are both enemy phase skills. So, here's an alternative. Since you can't really run Light Breath properly, and you don't get a lot out of it, well... I mean, it's quite simple. Uh, just run... Uh, just run uh, Dark Breath. The reason why you want to run Dark Breath is because it debuffs the enemy through their next actions. Unless they move again, the, the debuff remains on the enemy phase. So, it's just a straight upgrade to Light Breath. It's literally like Light Breath, but, but it works on both sides, whereas Light Breath is very, well, finicky. It sucks, but I mean, if your phase is this enemy built, like, this enemy phase built, you really want to take advantage of that, so Dark Breath is just the, be the, the better option. Other than that, Aether is fine, Gale Force is not gonna help you, Steady Breath is, again, fine, you, are go you said you're going to get Quick Repose, again, that's fine. Attack ploy and panic ploy, uh, that depends. Um, if you run dark breath, you can also run, well... Actually, wait, no, you can't. I was going to say, if you run dark breath, you can run, like, the, the smoke skills, but we don't have them as seals yet. Uh, rest smoke and death smoke, that is. So, attack ploy is probably still your best choice, and you don't really have any other choice. So, alright. Yeah, that looks fine. I don't know what uh, what other IVs I would use, considering you really want to use a, a Panic Boy with her. 
59 HP being actually high enough to, you know, panic even armors. So, yeah, I'd say everything looks fine here. Guess we'll move on now. Let's move on to Legit Tortle. Legit Ugh, sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, Legit Tortle's Leon. Alright, this is pretty typical. I'd figure I'd point it out because, you know. <laughs> it's just. A lot of people doesn't just completely underestimate him. He also said that he still need some more merges and a legendary Ephraim for that death buff, but other than that, he's all good. Alright. Let's see if he is all that good. Hmm. He wants Ephraim for the extra 3 HP and 4 defense. You're sitting at 52 HP as a result, and 35 defense with 32 res. Altone will also be able to buff that death and res further, and close death will also be able to do so. Ghost counter, quick repose, pretty standard. Attack smoke to make even more use of that bulk. Yep, that sounds about right. Um, I don't. I don't think I can really add anything to, to this here. I would almost say Glacies might be a bit better, but at the same time, eh, not really. The main reason I would say Glacies is actually a bit better is, well, honestly, quite simple. Um, if you get attack, then you attack back, you get attack again, then you attack back and kill or whatever. You have Glacies ready. So, if you have Glacies ready, you can just blow it up on someone else on the next turn. But that's like the only the only thing I could really say here. The rest looks perfectly fine. I figure I'd show it up because a lot of people underestimate Leon. If I'm being completely honest, he's probably our best free-to-play red mage that we've ever had. Which is Honestly, just sad. Because, let's be honest here. We got four free to play red mages. Four. We got Leon, Julius, Arvis, and. Who's the last one I keep forgetting? I know there's one that exists as well. Come on. Oh, come on, Jay. Canis, right, Canis exists, he lives. So we got four. They're all rest tanks. Why? As if we don't have enough of those with Lilina, Sanaki, and fucking everyone else. Anyway, um, what separates him over the, the others is the fact that he has an actual death stat. So he can actually run close counter and, you know, be a mixed tank. Something Julia should have been. Sorry, that just had to come out. This is also why I hope Naglafar gets a refine, and the refine basically transforms her his tome from a Raven tome, which no one fucking cares. Because all of the colorless you would ever find just can't be it back, so who cares? They're either running Fire Sweep Bow, or they're Veronica, or they're running Dazzling Staff. What's the point of a Raven Tome again? Oh, kill daggers? Wow, I'm so glad. <laughs> it, it's, it's so fucking stupid, it's laughable. Anyway. With that being said, let's move on. Okay, so this is a speed plus, a death, a minus, Eliwood from um, Suave Goose. I hope I didn't butcher that. I shouldn't. Suave is a fucking French word, for fuck's sake. I'm French. <laughs> but, okay, so... <coughs> Sorry. He said... Speed plus death minus. He's especially fun in, cav in cavalry teams, but he is designed to be self-sufficient when the situation calls upon it. 
Um, he kind of really, really wants to, you know, have those buff in at least attack. Yes, he does hit 58 attack. Yes, he does have attack ploy, but if you can't land the attack ploy, it's kind of iffy on if you're going to get a charge or not. Other than that, though, he's kind of like my own Eliwood, actually, except mine is 4 star plus 10, obviously. I don't have the feathers to invest in every character, unless it's a character I truly, truly like. This is pretty good, though. Uh, speed and attack ploy are really good for him, because his speed is meh. But with own calf, it's actually really good. So as it stands, it's like you're sitting on 64 attack and 47 speed if you're buffed by a horse. At that point, I would say maybe not run speed ploy and run death ploy instead. But if you're not, if you're you know not running him in a horse team, then yes, speed ploy is definitely a must-have at that point. Gale Force is definitely a good option. Taking over his fucking son. <laughs> so Sparrow is also really good. Swordbreaker can be a bit questionable, but at the same time he does have the speed to block Black Luna. Because because of Swordbreaker versus Bolt Fighter, Bolt Fighter becomes a speed check. It doesn't automatically double, which means he can take a hit and fuck him up. Then again, uh, most Zelgus ends up with 59 attack. 59 attack is absolutely deadly, so it does not one-shot him, of course, but it gets pretty damn near at times. This is 35 damage on him as a result, so if you can't land the attack boy, it can be pretty dangerous. Thankfully, though, like I said, Swordbreaker blocks Zelgus in his own in his own path. Same thing for Ira, but Ira actually has a way out, unlike Zelgus. Because most Ira run Slaying Edge, and Slaying Edge with, oh, I don't know, Legendary Actor with Ostia's Pulse is fucking cancer, because she goes from 51 attack, which would do only 27 damage, to 51 attack plus Regnal Astra of the ass. So, say you panic and speed ploy her, um, she has 46 attack and 42 speed. She does 22 damage to begin with, then she proc with 42 speed, that's still 16 damage. Yeah, uh, that's 38 damage. You're, you're, essentially if you did not have attack ploy, you would die. And that's if she's not buffed. If she's buffed by attack tactic, for example, you are absolutely bold. Thankfully, though, not a lot of people seem to run Ira anymore, which I find very peculiar, because I still find her one of the best sword unit of the game. She has just a very obnoxious amount of bulk. But yeah, good set. Um, not much else to say. As a whole, horse units are kind of shafted, in the sense that you can't really be too creative with their, with their sets. Because, uh, guess how many skill new skills they got since launch? Like, none. That are actually exclusive to them. Don't worry, though. Armored unit definitely needed special fighter and bold fighter and... Fuck me. Seriously, why? Alright, moving on. This is a speed plus death minus Levitane from. Oh god, I hope I don't butcher this. Juan DZ 4455. Sorry if I did butcher that. Which I'm pretty sure I did. Um. I don't have what he said. Oh, actually, no, I remember what he said. He said something like. That was my set, my, my arena set for Levitane. I would say Vantage is cool, but I would say Desperation is probably better. Uh, the reason why is if you have to deal with multiple blue, you have a way out as a result. Um, Desperation would help you double where it matters, because you, you already have 40 speed because of C plus and plus 7. It's the same concept as my own fucking Levitane I was running in Arena. And if you score high enough... Fury kind of becomes irrelevant and you kind of want to run Brazen Attack Death instead. 
because you already have the speed to double basically anything you're de you're dealing with. Even if you have Fury here, like even if you have Brazen Attack Death here, you have 37 defense, uh, 37 speed. Sorry, Odd Speed Wave makes that 43. Zelgus tends to have 37 because speed plus Zelgus is a terrible idea, and attack plus is just better in general. Unless you run Special Fighter, which is another completely different thing, but you know. Even then, uh, drive speed is a seal. If you really are afraid of that variation of of, of uh, Zelgus, there you go, you can double his ass. So yeah, Desperation would definitely be better than Vantage, and you're at a point where Brazen Attack Death is just better than Fury, period. Street Plus Death Minus are actually the same IV as my Levitane, so nothing to say here. It's, a, it's what I consider to be optimal for her. So congrats, you got good IVs. Other than that, not much else to say. Heavy Blade is definitely a must-have. Gale Force is definitely good, and Aether would maybe be good if you need Sustain, but from my experience, I really don't care about Sustain. Then again, I use Dragon Fang myself. Uh, I didn't go full on score. I will go full on score if she gets demoted, however. I will actually 5-star plus 10 her. As much as I don't like her character, she is a very fun unit to play with. So, yeah. Alright, now moving on to a speed plus HP minus Saber. Okay, so speed plus HP minus, my end IV will be speed plus res minus, and of course I am going to plus 10 him, but with zero banner that is kind of hard. Anyway, he is an infantry team. He is in the infantry team, my bad. That gets light breath buff. He is supposed to stay healthy, and HP speed 2 is there because it's good in both phase. And it adds a bit more tankiness than something like speed def 2, because speed def 2 only gives 2 bonus stats in general, because he doesn't get doubled anyway. 4 HP is for more bulk, and that is more than 2 def, yada yada yada. Um, I disagree with that statement, because if you go in more than one fight, 4 HP becomes as good as 2 defense. So, uh, you know. At least against melee units. P.S. What do you think of Saber's general stat line? I think it makes him have big viability. Okay, um, the Minerva slash Saber stat line. Because they basically, they literally have the same stat. It's just that Saber is an infantry red unit, which is oversaturated to shit. Whereas Minerva is a flying green unit, which doesn't have a whole lot of contend contenders. Um, that's already one of the reasons why Minerva is just much better than Saber as a result. But uh, his stat line is really good. I do love that stat line. There's a reason why I used to say Minerva was the best green unit at one point of the game. Um, I might have overblown it a little, but I still think, she, at the time, she was at the very least in the top 3, if not top 2. She was just really, really fantastic, and the second you put her in a flyer team is just... Oh god, it's disgusting. You end up hitting like 60 attack with like 45 speed very easily, while still retaining like 40 defense. And also your res, which is not meant to be that good, is still over 30 for fuck's sake. Extremely bulky character. Now, how well does it work for Saber? It makes him kind of a jack of all trade, and a lot of character does what he does, but better. Which is a sad thing, but it is what it is. Um, to give you an example, Levitane just got released. Yeah, uh, Levitane just got released, and what is, wh how much speed does this boy Saber have? 36? With speed plus? Let's see, 40, 43. 
but 43, 40, 38, and then this is a speed plus. Oh no, actually, also summon their support, 36. So 36 speed, and if it wasn't speed plus, it's 33. Um, there is a very similar stat line with Levitane, eh? Yikes. Uh, Levitane has one less HP, I believe. I'm going by memory here, okay? So I might be wrong on some numbers. So Levitane has one less HP. Yikes. Um, six more attack. Again, yikes. Two less speed. All right. Two more defense. And the same res. And unlike Saber, she has a legendary weapon, which is actually really solid for her. You have characters like that. Then you have other characters like Legyarn, who completely blows him in speed, defense. And I believe also HP. Like, it's disgusting. The problem is there's a lot of characters that basically does everything he can do, and more. That's the main problem for him. His stat line isn't bad, it's just not on the type of unit that is all that new. So while he has a stat line that's kind of interesting, it's completely overshadowed because, oh, I want a death tank that, you know, hit hard. Inata's there. Yes, I'm going with Inata as a choice. Oh, you want speedy, but still tanky, that can also hit hard. Uh, Leg Yarn, Levitain, Ira, Legendary, Marth, there's a ton of choices here. So, yeah, uh, he's kind of in this weird situation where a Legendary weapon could definitely turn everything around. But, as it stands, he's kind of screwed. That doesn't mean you shouldn't build him, by the way. Don't let, don't let yourself be discouraged by what I'm saying when it comes down to units. You should always build whatever you want to build. That's just how it is. Okay? But yeah, uh, his stat spread is just a bit unfortunate. Which is a shame, yeah, which is a shame because I know quite a lot of people who like Saber as a character. Alright, now for the build itself. Safeguard. If you've watched my last video concerning Safeguard, you know I have a peculiar disattachment for the weapon. And this is another situation. I understand what you're trying to aim for. You're trying to make him bulky, but 41 defense is not exactly bulky enough. Uh, I'm guessing you're probably running Death Tactic on the team you're using with... Well, no, you're using Light Breath, my bad. Um, that's 45 defense, and it can be a bit hard to aim the buff so it actually hits Saber at times, so... It's shaky. It's it's definitely shaky. His speed is alright. His damage, however, is laughable. Um, if there's anything, I would probably just say, throw away the bulk and go straight offense. Life and death might probably be a great choice for you, actually. Life and death and uh, sling edge. Same reason as what I said when it came down to Ron Zoner's fur, who basically also came back to me and told me I he actually attempted with Nameless Blade and it gave him a lot better results. Now, Nameless Blade is definitely better than a good old Slaying Edge, but the points still remain. You can just... It's, slaying Edge is just more consistent, is the thing. So, okay. With that said, if you run Life and Death, and then you run Slaying Edge with a Death Refine, because you don't really need the speed at that point, you're already at 43 speed, unbuffed. Um, so you'd have like, what, 50 HP, 47 attack, uh, 43 speed. Wait, no, 52 attack, my bad. 43 speed. And on top of that, 
33 defense and 19 res. You take a hit into the res, your defense stays mostly the same. Uh, Slaying Edge will actually make this a bit easier for you to proc Aether as well. Um, especially once you're in Wrath range. Because once you're in Wrath range, what happens is you attack with Flashing Blade, get two charge. Then you get hit back, that's one charge. And then you proc Aether. Because it's it became a four cooldown skill, right? Wrath will take one charge off the cooldown to three. Then you get two from the Flashing Blade, get hit, so that's another charge. You can proc Aether immediately. Perfect. There's no problem with it. And you just do a fuck ton. You don't need this much speed already. Like, even at 43 speed without even speed wave, you're already fine. The highest speed you'll find is 47. Or 48 if you find someone stupid enough to run speed plus on Karda. Which, in my opinion, is just really a bad choice. You want attack plus on her. But, yeah. So, 52 attack and 43 speed. Your attack is already looking a lot sharper. I would say probably use him in a mixed team as well. With attack tactic. Just because that's more consistent than light breath. But, if you really want to use light breath, let's go with light breath. Uh, that's 56 attack and 47 speed. 56 attack, 47 speed is actually really good offensively. And you still have 33 base defense to lean back on. With Light Breath buffing you, that go up to 37. See? You still have a good amount of bulk. And it's not enemy phase exclusive. Which means you can also go on the offensive player wise. Because that's one of the main problems Safeguard has. First off, you don't get your proc as often. The 7 death is neat, but it's only enemy phase. So if you're on the offense, it, it's basically a 14 might beat stick. Which is a shame. So, yeah, uh, it's very, it becomes very shaky as a result. And your attack is very, very shaky as it stands. 51 attack with buffs is laughable at best, so you really want to work on it. If you can have another unit on the team that has, say, oh, double drive attack to buff him up, that would be also very useful, um, because as a result you would end up having, well, oh, I don't know, 62 attack? 62 attack, 47 speed is excellent. 100% really good. So, you know. And Flashing Blade is already consistent enough with 43 base speed. PV... E, that might depend at a few time, but even then you have an event speed wave to hit that 49 speed if required. So, yeah, life and death is probably your best option. Actually, I was also wrong on one thing, and you're probably already screaming in the comment, you're losing 4 health. You still have 46 HP. Uh, actually, that stat line becomes very, very similar to my Ira without an actual good special like Ragnar Astra. Uh, you, ha you have, like, say that would be a plus 10, and you're using life and death. Um, you'd have two more defense than my Ira. You'd have the same speed as my Ira. You would have... Oh, Jesus. Uh, you would have five more attack than my Ira at base. Now, keep in mind, you have summoner bonus, and mine doesn't, but... Still. And you'd still have 50 health, which is tied with my Ira. As for the res, well... Actually, you're still one point above me. <laughs> yeah. Um, Saber ends up having about the same stat as Ira, essentially. Just without Regnal Astra, which is a big pain, because Regnal Astra is really, really, really good. But, at least you'd have a starting point, and Aether would definitely be more consistent. That's just me, though. The, the way it would work is essentially getting into Wrath range. Then every time you're in Wrath range, you just can proc, you know, Aether immediately in one round as long as you double. And you have, well, 
if you double, you actually have flashing bait going, so, you know. This would probably be a good choice for you. So, let's move on. So those one are going to look jarring to a lot because it's two things at the same time. Um, usually a screenshot of the unit without buff and uh, then another one with the buff. I'm going to start by breaking my own rules because I'm going to be showcasing two units. I don't usually do this and I will not usually do this but in this case it's actually important to show both because there are two units that supports each other really well. I would also like to say um, the guy's name is Gamer. I would like you to post the video where you actually were doing uh, Abyssal Legendary Actor, I believe. It's basically a showcase of the builds, in case, you know, it's just a good idea, a good way to show it's better than what people think. Alright. So this is a Corrin and a Nile combo. Nile? What the fuck? Niles combo. They're not fully merged, but believe me, they can actually do a lot. Um, and actually, speaking of Gamer, he did a very well, a very good description of them on Discord. This was actually the main reason I picked him, because it was really easy to understand his intent behind everything. Uh, the build is already... The, the builds are already pretty much perfect from what I... from what I saw. Uh, we'll see in a sec, but... Okay, so let's start with Corin. He has both Yaddo, like Speed Yaddo and the Effect Yaddo. The effect Yaddo is mostly for Niles, and the assist is Rally Death Res and Reposition. For his special, is Aether, Dragon Fang, because he has it by default. Draconic Aura, Luna, Moonbow. Skills, Disencounter, Life and Death, Swiss Sparrow, Darting Blow, Defense plus 3, which is again default. Quick Repose, Desperation, Renewal, Sword Breaker, Obstruct, Default, Drag Back. Distant Guard, Drive Res, Drive Speed, On Attack, On Speed, Threaten Speed. Okay, so what he had to say about this is, I might give Corin Close Guard, Distant Guard was for Guard Bow build, I had a Miles before I had Close Counter. They're part of my Arena Core and main team along with Soren, who's mostly there to debuff the enemies, attack and speed with his weapon and chill speed, while Corin and Niles do all the tanking and killing. Okay, so... I might give Corin close guard. I would probably wait for it to be on a different unit than Veronica because Veronica is just too good of a unit. But once it's on a second unit, yeah, I would definitely say to go for it. Close guard is, in general, a very fantastic skill, unlike distant guard, in my opinion, because then you can stack it with your close death. You're already at, you know, you're already at um, 33 defense to begin with, and then you have Yato buffing on top of it, on top of the support, say they are ne next to one another, that's 39 defense right there. Yeah, 39 defense, and uh, the rest stat with just doesn't really matter, because nothing hits res, that's melee range, it's a dragon, which would, you know, hit his defense, but um, just to you more you, uh, that would be... 53 res. Well, actually it's relevant because of iceberg damage, but you know. I've seen his Corrin in action and he actually can really do good work, to say the least. Probably butchered that. It's kind of funny too, because um, back then when I did the tier lists with Sages, I actually put Corrin really high on the tier list. And there was a reason for it. I was actually using the guy and his bulk was unheard of. Uh, before Corrin, before Corrin, there was no real sword unit that had like a death stat on top of an attack and speed stat. Like Lin had a speed and death stat as well as a rest stat, but no attack to speak of. Lucina had great attack and speed, but not really any defense. Ryoma was like the closest, but not really accessible. And again, like the death is only 27. Uh, Corin was just an excellent duelist at the time and could even give, you know, a run uh, a run for the money to blue units. While I 
don't like him as a as a character. He's a def it was definitely a great unit back then, and it's, I'm kind of glad to see that he's still able to you know get to those heights. So as a as a whole, Corin is kind of meant to be a buffer for Niles while also being able to be a duelist. While as he said, Sorin in the background would debuff everything. So E could actually be able to use his attack and speed more effectively, but also so he could do a bit more damage. Well, more damage easier and live easier because of Aether. Because, you know, he debuffs the speed so you can so you can double more consistently. I believe he killed he killed the Abyssal Actor G LHB so quickly. I think he, he he was done with the LHB on turn 3, I believe? Which is just stupid. <laughs> but, you know, that's completely normal, I guess. Was pretty funny to see, though. And now for his Niles. Okay, so his Niles has Slaying Bow, refined to defense, refined to speed. A Guard Bow, refined to speed. Um... Obviously, Iceberg, Rally Speed, Death, Drawback, Reciprocal, Aid, all that, nah, nah, nah. Close Counter, Fury, Warding Blow, obviously default. I'm going to skip the default skills because they're not really relevant to this. Quick Repose, Cancel Affinity, Run a Wall, Brash Assault, Death Voice, Perez, fuck. <laughs> Own Attack. So... Okay. Death Boy is most likely just to debuff for Corin. Uh, QR is definitely good for close counter sets because the speed becomes kind of average and see focus on his defense. Uh, Fury is good also if you want him to be more offensive. Close counter is better if you want to just abuse his bulk through Corin and through close defense and distant guard. Or, you know, close guard whenever you get that. So, yeah, those are actually really good. Don't let that low 23 death stat fool you. He's taking zero dam damage from Arden. Grimma, choose your legend Hector and more in Arena. I have a screenshot of his matchup with them, if anyone is inter interested. So as you can tell, he's pretty tanky, and, and, and all he took was Corrin's buff and a death tile. At most, he once took 9 damage without a death tile from a Carlo who couldn't even double him. <laughs> That's so sad. Usually Iceberg helps him get all gets the skill, which is why I kept the Slaying Bow on him. Yeah, Slaying Bow is definitely the, the best option you have here. I th There's really not much I can say here, it's pretty well optimized. Quick repost on uh, Mel, Ye oh, Mel Yato. Okay, no, that's kind of not the name, but on Mel Corin is a bit... Uh, weird? But I can see why in certain cases. He also has Desperation if he needs it, so he, I'm guessing he kind of switched between the two. Quick Repose is just better for scoring in Arena, and that's it. Which is completely understandable. Also, that Corrin is really bulky, like, very good mix bulk, while still having 50 HP, so he can actually tank a Black Luna to the face. Uh, actually, no, he can't, but he gets really close. And if Attack Ploy procs, or Chill Attack, he can 100% tank it. So, you know. Definitely really good builds. I really wanted to showcase them either way. So, anyway, moving on. We're already over an hour. Jesus Christ. Also, yeah, uh, before I forget, both of their IVs are both attack plus HP minus. And again, I don't see much you can change there. Maybe res minus on Niles, because you already have so much res, but you kind of like the, to have the Iceberg damage to really get the kills in, so... It's kind of iffy at times, because obviously Niles doesn't have that much attack, so... Having a good, reliable special is really, is really helpful. Anyway. Next is a Mikaya. Um, this is from... Uh, Mikaya Spice Latte. So, okay. 
this is a Def plus speed minus Mikaya. She's a mixed thing that served me quite well. I run her with a lot of defense boosters. Attack Tactic, Death Tactic, Peshkaz, Drive Death and Close Guard. Yes, our ally support is so. Okay. So, I actually requested her to put a screenshot with the buffs as well. So, essentially, you're sitting at 36 defense, 40 defense against, you know, melee unit. 40 defense and 48 res. Definitely not bad. I will say one thing, however. Um, IVs wise, you can actually improve that. Death plus speed minus is not her best in my opinion, especially since you don't run something like Lacey's or Iceberg. I would say a death plus res minus for this kind of set is probably going to be better. The main reason why I say this is because she has so much res, it doesn't matter what you remove. At the end of the day, it's completely fine. Completely fine. Whereas your speed, on the other hand, can make a big difference between KOing an armored unit and not KOing an armored unit. So, I would just keep that in mind. Uh, obviously, she's already plus 10, so fishing for IVs is rough, to say the least. But, just say, by some miracle, you pull a death plus res minus, Mikaya, you can actually do that. Other than this, this is a really good set. 40 defense is really good against uh, all kinds of unit, really. Uh, you one shot Zelgius at all time, obviously. At this point, you have what? Uh, 109 attack versus Zelgius. Wonder which Zelgius would tank that shit. Let's go, Barrier Blade Zelgius. My hero. <laughs> Sacrifice is also really good. 44 HP can really, really help with that. Um, but I feel like if you're using Sacrifice, you would probably want to use her in tandem with... Um, fuck, what, what, who are units that really like to be at full HP? Brave Celica would probably be one of them. Uh, that way you can just renew Double Lion. Uh, possess Celica, but she's not really that great anymore. Even though, actually, she never was that great to begin with. But yeah, I guess really just Brave Celica would probably really love to have her as a teammate. Uh, other than that, not much to say. It's just a really good set. Like I said, the only thing you can really change is the Ivies. And also. If you really want to improve her bulk even more, because honestly, I'm basically using this kind of set on my Lushesis, you want to run Attack Ploy. Even if you... Sorry. Even if you go res minus, you still have 41 res. Ploys are beyond consistent at that point. So, Attack Ploy is definitely a good choice. Since, you know... Uh, all it comes down to is guessing where the AI is going to go, and... Boom! Fight as defense. Make your 40 defense even better, essentially. That's all I have to say, however. So, let's move on. So, this is an Ogma from CG CJ. Yeah, CJ. Sorry. Um, the reason why I was confused for a second is because in French, J and G are literally like changed around how they are pronounced. J is G and G is J. So, a little bit of trivia I guess. So, um, CJ. Let me just... Okay. Speed plus res minus is merge project that I'm just unsure what to do. I enjoy Ogma as a character, but I am overall at a loss on how to go about building him. So for now, since he ties for lowest res in the game, I gave him meme skills as placeholders. This is him without and but without and with buff tactic and res play applied on the second screenshot. Or I just use the same picture twice. I am stupid. Um, one second. <laughs> I will take the meme. Where is it? 
sorry about this. Enough, I guess. Slowly. All right. So. <laughs> um, Alchemy is a bit of an odd choice. Actually, you know, it's kind of stupid that I didn't mention this, but I guess Alchemy is also fitting the category when it comes down to. Um, Unit with a lot of attack, speed, and defense. As a matter of fact, I'd say he's actually better than Saber in some extent. To some extent, uh, though he's a bit more min-maxed in, in a way because he has more attack, more speed, but his res is absolutely atrocious. But yeah, those are there. Characters like these are the reason why Saber kind of just lose a bit of prevalence as a result. Either way. Um, Iron Sword is 6 might, so this is just base 40 attack and base 38 base 38 speed. Or no, no, sorry, base base 40 attack and base 43 speed. There we go. Um there's really a decent amount of ways you can build him. You can make him as a Wood Owl Wall Breaker, uh, you can make him as a Slaying Edge user. I know I'm bringing Slaying Edge a lot, but I'll be honest with you, Slaying Weapons are honestly the best fucking type of weapons. Armor Smasher is also a great weapon for him. Um, Fire Sweep is also good for him. There's really, like I said, a lot of ways to go around them. Fire Sweep Life and Death is there, really good for him, actually. Uh, he's going to hit 55 attack, 43 speed. With 6 attack and 6 speed up, he's basically sitting at, well, 61 attack and 49 speed, which is extremely hard hitting at the very least. Um, as for his special, probably going to be Draconic Aura or Bonfire if you go out of life and death for something like, say, Fury. So Sparrow is also good. It's usually like anything that buffs his attack is good. Uh, Sturdy Blow can also be a great option, especially if you're going to use him in Arena. Uh, because, again, armored units are very prevalent. Dual skills might be a thing, but even then, armored units just scores better. Uh, like, Zelga scores better in general. So, as a result, uh, Armor Smasher is still going to be relevant, I feel like. Then again, it's a bit early to say, so we'll see. So, okay, yeah. I'd say Fire Sweep is a good option in, for overall use. If you're talking about Arena, Armor Smasher is a good idea. If you take Armor Smasher, take a Death Refine again, because uh, you already double most armored units to begin with, so having more speed serves no purpose. Uh, what else? Slaying Edge. Uh, Slaying Edge, again, I would go for defense. Um, Desperation is a good idea with Slaying Edge. Uh, if you use Slaying Edge, again, Draconic Aura, Flashing Blade with Desperation is a great uh, option. A great cheap option, because you attack and then you proc Draconic Aura immediately for an extra 18 damage. Um... Uh, you could also go Wrath to some extent, though that one is more like for a Wodao set. If you go Wodao with Wrath, Wrath being basically your other choice to go out of the cooldown minus one, uh, the second you're in Wrath range, you can actually just go with, you know, combos such as Flashing Blade with other skills. Most likely going to be running Aether with those sets because. 
you can't run desperation, so you need some way to sustain yourself. But because of the way Wrath Roar, oh, Wrath works and how Wadao is, you can probably just run something as silly as Soul and still do good because you get 20 damage on special once you took once you take damage. So just keep that in mind. Again, like I said, Ogma is pretty much an hyper offensive unit, so build him like one. That's pretty much all there is to it. Hope that helps. Just remove this and this. And now for the final unit I'm going to be showing today, and Jesus Christ, my throat is dead. This Tiki. Um, this Tiki is weird. <laughs> I don't know why you would run Wind Sweep at this point. Uh, you already have so much attack, and at that point, I would just ignore speed altogether. Actually, you have so much attack, my gu my guy. It's just stupid. At that point, you have enough attack to one shot Zelgus in a lot of scenarios. So, if you take the effective refine for for. Um, Breath of Fog. I believe he left nothing to say about this, so... Actually, let me just verify. Might have, actually, so... Oh, no, he did, he did say something. Good. Good thing I checked. Um, attack plus HP minus, she is on the team with Myrrh, married to Naoi, and is with Fjorm on water season. Usually blessed with water, but I have her earth to show what, she le what she's like during water season. Again, like I said, you have a lot of attack. Um, I can kind of see why you would go wind sweep, but at the same time I'm like... You one-shot a good deal of these. Anything that's green dies in one hit. So Wind Sweep is kind of lost on those guys. And you're killing your chance to use Quick Repost as a result, so... This set can be working pretty well, but at the same time, you could just work on having more attack and more attack. And just make it even more stupid. Something as stupid as like Double Drive Attack with this set. While you're next to Naoi, so maybe Naoi could have Double Drive Attack. That could be an option. Uh, you get an extra 8 attack, plus the 6 attack from Murr, you're at 79 attack, plus the Breath Refine, that you're at 84 attack. Yeah. Um, to give you an idea, we have, we just received a new, well, Tiki, right? 29 Raz, let's make it 33, because plus 10, right? With like 49 HP, yeah. Uh... This set would be sitting at 84 attack, which means it loses 16 attack, falls down to 68 because of combat triangle. 68 becomes 102 attack, minus 33 res. Let's say it's res tactic. Let's go hyper on this shit. So 39 res, right? 102 minus 39 equals 63 damage. You are still one-shotting legendary Tiki. Like it's fucking nothing. So again, when Sweep kinda loses all meaning. I kinda can somewhat see the reason at what at in uh in a way because well you don't struggle with dragons. Uh, that much is pretty obvious. But Melee units you might not always one-shot, I'm guessing, is the thinking behind this, but again, like I said, you could just go full-on attack and just one-shot everything you're dealing with. Just a thought. Otherwise, Wind Sweep is a good idea if you just want to debuff the enemy, but at that point you just don't want to run Heavy Blade, you just want to run Speed, uh, speed Smoke instead, so your other dragons can also benefit from it. Murr especially will love this because... Again, as I said a million times, Great Flame is really reliant on speed for a lot of matchups, so having the speed reduce on the enemy side is really helpful for her. Other than that, not much else to say. Uh, pretty good set. 
Heavy Blade is there for Glimmer, so you use Wind Sweep, and it's ready essentially. But I feel it like that's kind of a, a, a bit of a waste at that point. But that's just me. Like I would run probably something like Bonfire. So if I don't one shot and I have to tank something, I'm at one charge away from Bonfire proccing, so I get hit and then proc it immediately. Another thing you could probably do is run AOEs on her. Yeah, that sounds weird, but it works. Uh, I can definitely see Heavy Blade with Blazing Wind work on her. <laughs> Special Spiral as well. If you really want to go super ultra mode. Because then the first AoE you're in, you're proccing AoEs for days. And with 71 base attack, not much is going to stay in your way, I, I'd wager. So, you know. But yeah, uh, with that said, I believe that's it. This is almost an hour and 30 minutes. If you want to join, like I said, just join the Discord and post your build. But actually wait until I, I have given the, you know, the go for it. So, yeah, not much else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned at least something from this. So... Other than that, have a fun day everyone!